Hey, if you're about to buy a smartphone, wait! A whole bunch of brand new smartphones are about to come out and I've got this skinny on each and every one of them. Coming up next on the Computability Show. Hey guys, welcome again. I'm Scott Liberto. This is the Computability Show, and this week I've done my homework. I went ahead and found the coolest, the best, top of the line phones, smartphones that you're going to be able to buy. Now, all these announcements have uh, come out, all the teaser videos, all the um, leaked photos, and I scoured the internet and I found as many bits and pieces together to bring you what I think is the best of the best of what's about to come out. Now, um, if you have never heard of a flagship phone, uh, flagship phones really are the top phones that these major carriers uh, are, uh, have out. Um, Apple, Samsung, Sony, and <laughs> believe it or not, Blackberry. So... We're going to start off with what most people want to hear about, and that is the new Apple uh, iPhone 6. In fact, um, there uh, was an announcement or uh, some information coming out just uh, last Thursday. Um, here it is right here. It's an invitation to go to the Flint Center for Performing Arts in Cupertino. And on September 9th uh, at 10 a.m., they're going to be talking about uh, the release of the iPhone 6, but not only the iPhone 6, but there's also going to be not one, but two phones coming out at this event. So, and I think there might be a watch, but here I'm just going to be talking about the main phone, and that's the iPhone 6, and that's the one that most of you guys are going to be purchasing. Now, they're going to be um, uh, revealing this uh, at the event. Uh, it's going to be held, like I said, at the Koopa, uh, at the uh, Cupertino uh, in San Francisco. I'm sorry. Uh, it's going to be launched at the Flint Center for the Performing Arts. Now, this is the same place where the Mac computer was released. And it, uh, back in the day, Steve Jobs, that's when he uh, first unveiled the Mac personal computer back in way back in 1984. Now, Normally, they have these events at a much smaller venue, so I'm kind of thinking that this is going to be a much larger event. Um, the other events uh, were held at a place that holds 757 people. This venue, the Flint Center, holds up to 2,405 people, so a much bigger uh, venue. In fact, they're doing something I haven't seen before. They're actually uh, bringing out these tents uh, building some tents on the grounds. And what I'm hearing is that for the first time, they're going to allow people to play with these phones. And we might be hearing more about it uh, from some firsthand um, reviews, some bloggers, um, uh, developers, that sort of thing. But the rumor says that it's going to be coming out two sizes. One is a 4.7 inch and one is more of a phablet, a phone tablet combination. And that um, is, I heard, and it's rumored that it might be called the uh, 6L. I'm thinking L for large. So, you know, that's sort of, you know, the possibility of what's about to happen. Now, there's one thing that was written. Now, I made sure to bring it a little bit larger here. And that is... We wish we could save more. So there's only so much information that has been handed out on this thing so far. Um, I'm thinking that uh, this is going to be a game changer. Now, this is the first time I've even considered getting an Apple phone. And the reason is, really, I'm not small. I like larger screens. My eyes aren't the best. I wear glasses. And... 
if you haven't noticed, the whole smartphone world has been deluged with tons of phablets, some larger devices. I like to use, uh, I'm, my phone of choice right now is the Note uh, 3. And so, been quite happy with it. And, you know, uh, I think they're finally uh, catching up with the rest of everybody as far as the size. So, the size is the big thing. Now, this is the venue. This is what it looks like. So, uh, just so you have an idea of, you know, how big this venue is. It's huge. It holds... Tons of people, 2,405 people. And I'm wondering if on September 9th we're going to be getting some, you know, firsthand uh, reviews on this. I'm pretty excited. Um, here are the different sizes of the phone. Now, I, I made sure to get a little size comparison between the 5S, the 6, and the other 6. Um, it's, it's like my, my brother... Uh, the, the, the iPhone 6, uh, I, I don't know if they're going to have different names for them, but I'm kind of hoping, because how are you, what are you going to do, say iPhone 6, 4.7, 5.5, they have to put something in there to let you know what the differences between the two are. Um, let me give you a little close up here. Now, you can you can tell it's much bigger, but they're going they're not it is isn't only bigger, but it's going to be supposed to be the most expensive one that they've had out yet. They're going to be using instead of Corning Gorilla Glass, they're going to be using Sapphire. Now Sapphire is one of the it's the second hardest natural occurring mineral on Earth, and so that's going to give you a screen that is going to be really difficult to scrape, to hurt, to break. And, but it does add a little bit extra cost, and it takes a lot more energy to produce these uh, types of screens. Um, also, the new phone is supposed to have, uh, the 4.7 inch is supposed to have 120, up to 128 gigabyte of storage. But it still isn't going to have that SD card that everybody's looking for. So, but, you know, that's pretty good. You know, that's a nice little option. They still will have the 16 gigabyte version. Now, I hear that they're going to finally put in some optical um, stabilization instead of the digital stabilization. The big difference there is optical is always better. It's always better to physically move the, um, the uh, optics than to do it digitally because then you're not really faking it. You're, you're, you're moving it uh, accordingly and you're, you're doing a physical movement. Um, anyway, the, the LED backlight is supposed to be a lot better and thinner to allow a little more room inside. It's gone from a, a 0.4 millimeter model to a 0.6 millimeter uh, model. So a little more room in there. They, they are updating the mute button, which might not sound like a big deal, but people hit that mute button all the time. They make that mistake. And if you're an Apple head, you can appreciate that they're going to do something a little bit better with that. Um, also, the logo itself is going to be embedded into the back. Um, before, you've got this flat logo that was very scrapable. Now it's going to be embedded and it's going to be very difficult to scrape it. So between the front of it and the back of it, it's going to be a little more tough and you won't have to worry about so many scrapes or your brand new iPhone looking terrible in about a week because you accidentally put your keys in your pocket or did something like that. Now the battery is going to be a little bit better. Um, thank goodness they did something about the battery. Um, if you guys haven't been reading the news recently, the battery on the iPhone, their uh, Apple is actually, I think for the 5S and the 5C, uh, they're replacing that battery for you at no charge. And so there's this program that's out. You need to send your phone in, back up your phone first, send it in, but they will do that, uh, which is, you know, it's, it's something. Um, the 4.7 inch of, uh, phone, the, the iPhone 6, is going to have a uh, 1,810 milliamp battery. It's a slight increase over the uh, 1,560 milliamp battery. Um, so let's see. They think that the larger one is going to have a uh, 2,915 milliamp uh, one, so, but that, that's to be determined. We're going to find all that out on uh, September 9th. 
Now the processor, um, they have advanced it. It's going to go from the A7 processors to the A8 processor. So it's going to incorporate a 64-bit uh, processor in there. And they're also going from a uh, 28 nanometer uh, chip uh, manufacturing process to a 20 nanometer uh, process. What that means for you is the smaller that they make these things, the faster the internal components are going to be able to, to, uh, to work. And so that's going to be more efficient, and so it's going to allow the battery to work a little bit better on top of it. Now, there might be an atmospheric sensor uh, in it, um, in some of the, uh, 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 some of the, uh, in some of the uh, things online, they've said that the that that might be a possibility. Now, what that means to you is that they're going to be able to check barometric pressure and like a rain gauge for the most part. You're going to be able to check out weather trends, that sort of thing. And uh, the camera is probably going to be upgraded. Now, it might be upgraded to the uh, 13 megapixel sensor from Sony. Um, that would give you uh, pretty good uh, optics. Sony's always been good with their optics, and you know that that's sort of a wait and see situation. Some of the negatives uh, about it is: will it have near field communication? Some rumors say yes, some say no. So I really don't know. Uh, definitely won't have a removable battery because it's going to be a solid uh, sealed structure, just like all the past ones. Still doesn't have Adobe Flash, so if you're looking for Adobe Flash, you do need to look to. Android or other devices. Wireless charging is not going to be native, and uh, you can't add additional memory via SD cards. So um, if the phone dies and you have everything stored on your phone and you don't have it backed up through uh, iCloud, you're basically out of luck. And finally, they haven't said anything about it being a waterproof version. So, you know, if you're looking for a waterproof phone that comes native out of the box, this might not be the phone for you. But computability, Scott Liberto will be live on uh, September 9th, and I'm going to be giving you, you know, we're going to be che fact-checking and seeing what really comes to reality on this phone. So, uh, again, first iPhone I would even consider buying due to it being a large enough size for my eyes and my hands to press the buttons properly. Now, we're going to move on to the Samsung Galaxy Note 4. I love Android. They're awesome. Um, I have a Note 3 right now, and this one is going to come out with some monster specs. Um, but before we get to the specs, I promised you teaser videos, and so this is the first teaser video for you. Handwriting is being forgotten. So Samsung Galaxy Note introduced the S Pen to remind us how much handwriting means to us. After all, the things we love the most should never go away. Innovation for today and tomorrow. September 3rd. Ready to note? Okay, so they're saying ready to note. Um, I'm ready to note. I can't wait to see this phone. I think it's you know kind of exciting that they're coming out with this phone. And you'll be able to hear more about it after September 3rd. Now, September 3rd, um, you're going to be able to uh, hear the announcement from Germany. Uh, it's the IFA basically 
uh, Germany's answer to CES, and it's going to be going on from the 5th to the 10th, but the announcement will happen there on the 3rd. And so um, they're also supposed to have an, a smartwatch come at the same time. And a lot of these phones and stuff uh, is going to be coming out with these smartwatches to pair with your device. Um, so far, um, Samsung hasn't made a phone that, or a uh, watch that will pair uh, with other devices. They only pair with Samsung devices. In fact, there's a rumor uh, that they're going to have a standalone um, watch too. But that's for another show. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the photos. Now, these are some leaked photos that I found online. And that's pretty much what it looks like. I mean, from the front, it looks very similar to the past uh, notes. Um, it's got a 5.7 inch display, the same as what they've had before. But, um, and it's got a, it's going to have a 2K display uh, screen resolution. But it should have a, uh, like a 500 plus uh, pixel per inch density. So that's pretty wild monster specs. Um, it'll have th uh, 3 gigs of RAM, uh, Android KitKat, it better have KitKat because that's the la latest Android operating system, 32 gigabytes of RAM, which is the same as before. Um, it will be able to support up to 128 uh, gigabytes of uh, of SD card expansion, which is always nice, and it will have 4K recording capabilities. Now, uh, there was rumors that this phone is going to be water and dust resistant, so I don't know if you're going to be able to submerge it or not. In order for you to submerge it, you sort of have to have an O-ring to seal it, and the inside needs to be able to have that capability, so... We're going to find out eh, pretty much in the near future. Now, this phone is going to have something that no other phone has ever come out with. And I'm a little surprised that they're actually going to be doing this. Um, they're actually going to be coming out with something to help you uh, tell how much UV radiation you, can, you have absorbed. Um, sounds crazy. Now, what I just put up here was that is a photo of a girl who was in a viral video recently where a videographer went ahead and used a camera that allows you to see what it looks like um, you, uh, exposing you to ultraviolet light. And so it can show you how much sun damage your skin has gotten over the years. This girl looks like she has absolutely flawless skin, but under this type of light in the right camera that can see the light, you can tell that she does have uh, damage underneath her skin. So um, it's, uh, you know, it's a pretty scary thing. So this sensor will be able to uh, measure UV radiation, and um, you basically point the back of the device toward the sun, and it will take readings. Now, if it can take readings, then it can, you can put in your skin type, and... Hopefully they'll have some stuff that you, it'll read your skin type and tell you approximately how long you or maybe somebody else, maybe your kids, can be out in the sun and absorb that quantity of solar radiation. So Now, according to cancer.org, um, skin cancer is the most common of all cancers. Um, it also accounts for nearly half of all cancers in the United States, more than 3.5 million cases of basal and squamous uh, cell skin cancer are diagnosed in the U.S. every year. And melanoma is the most serious of skin cancers. Uh, it'll account for more than uh, 76,000 cases of skin cancer in the year 2014. So, you know, they're, they, they're really trying to help you with... Uh, seeing how your heartbeat is and checking your health and that sort of thing, this kind of brings it to a different level. Could this phone save your life? Who knows? I know as a kid, I didn't realize the quantity of exposure I was getting. And so, you know, maybe this will bring attention to, you know, this being pretty much an epidemic if so many people are dying or getting skin cancer. So um, it's pretty cool. Now, the way, it, way it's going to be doing this, is it's going, it's, it's going to be able to read uh, the 
it, it'll figure out by your skin index. So low is a reading of zero to two, which means low danger. Uh, moderate would be between three and five on, on their scale. Six to seven will be high. Uh, eight to 10 means very high. You, you can uh, burn easily. And, oops, and, um, oops, I just lost my information. And 11 is extreme. So when you point it up and you got 11 out there, you can pretty much figure out how much time you can be out in the sun and you know, not have, the, not, not have that cumulative damage that can build up to a point where you can end up with skin cancer. Um, so this is all going to be integrated into the existing S Health app that they have that's built into the phone. And uh, you might be able to decrease your odds of getting skin cancer over a lifetime. So good stuff uh, for the Samsung Note 4. I'm a big fan of it. Now, Sony, Xperia Z3. There's been the Z1, there's been the Z2, and this is the Z3. Sony, you yeah, don't really hear too much about because they have not been this super big player. But you know something? This past year, they stopped making laptops. Yes, I said it. They stopped making laptops. They still make the tablets, but they don't make laptops anymore. They also don't make dex uh, desktops. So the whole Vio series is out the door. But they're taking and they're they're hedging their bet, and they decided to throw in, put their hat again into the ring, into into the smartphone ring, by building a yet another flagship. Xperia phone. Now, here is some photos. This right here is the uh, leaked photos from XperiaBlog.net of the brand new Xperia Z3. This Z3 is very similar to what they've had before. Um, instead of, uh, it's got a 5.5 inch display. It's got 1080 full HD uh, display, 20 megapixel camera, and 3 gigs of RAM. The only major increase they have for it is, uh, or I guess major, major minor, if it matters how you look at it, from 2.3 gigahertz to a, a 2.4 gigahertz quad-core processor. So not, not that big of a change. But um, the thing is about Sony, if you're going to buy a Sony uh, device, you're going to get a great camera and you're going to get a great uh, screen. The camera is a 20 megapixel camera and the screen uses the uh, tri, tri luminous uh, display and the X reality engine. That's the same technology that they're using in their, um, in their TV sets these days. Uh, my last TV set that I got, I didn't go for the one with tri luminous display. I'm not happy because I don't have the same contrast and the colors aren't as vivid. So that's what it gives you. Plus, everybody knows that the Exmor, uh, Exmor uh, sensor works really well in low light situations. And they always have uh, a nice glass uh, lens on it. So I, I think this might be one that you're looking for. It does have a 424 PPI pixel density. So, you know, pretty nice stats. Uh, stats. Sony did come out with a video. Um, this is another teaser video, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and play it right now for you. It's tame. You gotta see this. Brillante. Powerful. <sighs> Keeps going. Ah! 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 
September 3rd. That's when you're going to be hearing about that, too. And that's also going to be all announced. All the information is going to be announced at the uh, show in Germany coming up. Um, here we go. Oh, and if you if you go to the website, um, you'll and you subscribe to the Xperia Sony website, it will uh, they will send you some information on on the phone when it comes out, which is a really kind of nice plus by going to their YouTube channel. Um, let me let me go over a few more things about this phone. Uh, they're they are supposed to be coming out with a smartwatch, which is kind of interesting. Um, this is. During that video, you saw this one shot. I went ahead and got this one little shot of it. So they're not coming out with one device. They're coming out with three devices. Um, I do believe that this next phone is going to be... They might have some waterproofing, so I hear. Uh, hopefully, that's uh, going to come to fruition. And uh, so we'll see. They, they've done a pretty good job in the past. If you love Sony, here's an, yet another Sony device so you can match it with your camera and your audio system and your TV set and anything else that you have in your Sony lineup. So you can put you can put your dollars toward that company so more stuff will come out so they'll, maybe they'll start making laptops again. Who knows? Now finally, guys, don't laugh, please. At the beginning of this video, I told you that they're going to be coming out with some flagship phones. Um, Blackberry. 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 Did you hear me right? Blackberry is coming out with a brand new phone. Um, I was almost ashamed to be looking this up and telling you guys about it. But after I read a little bit about this and realized what direction Blackberry is going... I'm kind of intrigued, and maybe you will be too. Uh, the phone is called the BlackBerry Passport, and there is a picture of it right there. Um, I got the picture from CrackBerry.com, and they've got a lot of information on CrackBerry.com about this thing. What? And this will be uh, inv uh, will be unveiled September. Uh, 2014. I'm not sure of the ex the actual date, but the event will be held by BlackBerry in London. Now, you can tell this is a different looking phone. It's square, and according to them, it's hip to be square because what it does is it features a physical keyboard, but it is an all touch keyboard. I've never heard of an all touch keyboard, but they invented a brand new category of keyboard, and that's a keyboard that not only works by pressing the buttons on it, but it also works by allowing you to use the button area as a touchpad to mouse around. So it's also square. It's 4.5 inches with a 1440 by 1440 LCD display. So that's incredible stats. That's like the first time they've gone that far with a with a smartphone. Um, the whole it, they're going to be using Corning Corning Gorilla Glass Three, so the best of the Corning Glass that's out there. Um, it's also a ten point multi touch, so it, it 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 really has the ability for you to do all the multi touch gestures. But it's a five hundred and fifty three DPI phone. That's really incredible. Very, very clear. In a minute, I'm going to be playing some video, and you can kind of take a look at it in action. Um, also, it's going to have 32 gigabytes of internal memory. It's got near-field communication. Um, it also has... Uh, <laughs> get this. It not only has a, a very good processor in it, it also has a uh, Andrino... 330 graphics processor clocked at 450 megahertz. So a standalone, very strong processor in it. Um, it's also going to offer LTE, uh, Bluetooth 4.0, low energy, so it can send stuff, you know, not it doesn't have to be 30 feet, 30 meters away. It can actually be just a couple feet away, which is really nice. But it'll only accept nano uh, SIM cards. So the extra small ones, the same size that the... Uh, uh, the the Apple phone, smartphones uh, have. 
It's going to have a massive battery. It's going to get you through the day. It's 3,450 uh, 3, uh, milliamp battery, which is you know, pretty impressive. Um, the Passport also is going to have a quad-core Snapdragon uh, MSM8974 processor. So they're basically throwing caution to the wind and saying, we're going to go ahead and do this phone. Now, I've got a few other pictures here for you. That's not the only one. There it is right there. Um, I uh, think this phone is going to be big with business people. Architects, uh, mortgage brokers, um, people who want to look at schematics on the go. Uh, great for that. In the health field, uh, health uh, care field, you're going to be able to look at x-rays. And you won't have to do this. This is the one thing that you, everyone does with phones. They're like this doing all their computing, and then they're turning it like this. So you're going like this, and you're going like this. You'll never have a need to do this on a square phone. So that's kind of a nice thing. You're not going to drop it, probably, because you're not moving around so much. The screen, everybody knows that the, that the um, using a real keyboard is going to be better than, than uh, having... Hold on for one second. It's, it's better to have a real keyboard because you can type faster on a real keyboard. And all those people who went away from BlackBerry, they might be drawing people back again. So I'm kind of interested to see what's going to happen with this uh, particular thing. Um, here is what it looks like in someone's hand. Um, according, to, um, according to my sources online, that Ver Verizon and Sprint won't be able to carry this and but uh it will support AT&T and T-Mobile if it wants to. Now, overseas BlackBerry is still big. Um there's they're selling more now than they have in the past like uh I guess like 12 months. And so they they're they're getting better and better and I think this might be a game changer for them because they're not trying to follow what everybody else is doing. They're finally saying, we are BlackBerry, we're going to do a square phone, we're going to give you that keyboard you're looking for. And, you know, frankly, it's, uh, it's pretty necessary for them to have gone this far because if they didn't, they'd be out of business, and I'm kind of happy that they're going to do this. Now, the announcement is coming in September, but... This is supposed to be released sometime in October. So if you're looking to carry it, that's pretty much the date. And then finally, computability.com. That's me, Scott Liberto. Every Saturday, if you want to watch my show, come to it live. I'm going to be here uh, doing videos like this. You're going to be able to be in our chat room, talk to me afterwards. We have late night hangouts where you can come in jump into our hangout through Skype or um, through Google, and we'll just have a good time. We'll geek out, have a couple beers together, and have some fun. Uh, please subscribe to me on YouTube, like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and add me to your circles on Google+. Um, and please, anytime you see my video, make sure to share it and retweet my, vids, uh, my, my videos and, and uh, my tweets. Um, also, if you feel inclined, make a donation at computability.com, and I will be doing a crowdsourcing soon, so please look for it, and look for uh, a giveaway. We're going to be giving away a $1,000 prize uh, worth of, uh, a prize worth $1,000, $999, um, and that will be announced on September 1st. Um, and you, all you need to do is uh, follow the rules. You'll be able to see it on the Computability fan page. So uh, that's it. I'm Scott Liberto. It is uh, August 30th, 2014, and as always, happy computing.